Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Tell me, how can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget no, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget no, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget no, never. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. 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 We certainly thank and praise God for his grace and his mercy that he has shown toward us and allowing us to come together one more time to be in his presence. Truly, the Bible indicates that in his presence is fullness of joy and there's pleasures at his right hand forevermore. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, let us remember uh, men and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved and let us pray one for another that the Lord will continue to encourage our hearts especially as we see the day approaching Jesus is soon to come amen, amen. so let us uh, be delighted in the fact that um, he's coming and he's coming uh, for you and I so that's why I said, let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> so let, let us not have a troubled heart by the things that we see going on in the world. But let us uh, also be concerned about those that um, need witnessing and need uh, salvation. That we'll open our hearts and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are there any other prayer requests? Are there any other prayer requests? Uh, the cross. Amen. Let's remember Grover Beeson and the loss of his wife. Amen. Let's pray that the Lord comfort his heart. Amen. All right. Pray for the success of our Bible study on tonight. There's something to be said and done to encourage us to inspire our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together one more time to hear of your word, to receive of your word. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known. Remember those that have lost loved ones. Remember Brother Cleveland, Lord, touch his mind, his spirit, and his family in the name of Jesus. Bless those, Lord, that are out of the way, that are uh, not walking according to your will and to your word. Lord, we pray that there'll be a stirring up of repentance and redemption in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 So as we uh, look back on our, uh, our lesson, we want to go back over to the book of Hebrews uh, chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter number 12. And we're dealing uh, with walking in truth. And it's important for a child of God or a saint of God to walk in truth. And the Lord, he helps us to walk in truth because it's easy uh, for us to deceive ourselves. And we need the Lord to reveal unto us truth. 
and when he does reveal unto us truth, that we embrace it and walk in it. Not, not just uh, the hearing of the word, but also doers of the word. And what, I, what I'm specifically after on tonight is the Lord will reveal you to you. Amen. And he will open up your understanding and give you enlightenment on who you are and where you are in him. Life situations happen to us and God uses those life situations that happen to us to benefit us, to show us where we are in him. Uh, if, I, if, if something negative happens to me and I take it the right way, that shows I have a level of maturity in that area. If something negative happens to me and I have a pity party, uh, throw in the towel, want to want to stomp my feet and, and give up, that means I have some immaturity in me and I need to grow up. Amen? Amen? So the worst thing an individual can do in those cases is to deny it. To deny it. To deny having issues. To deny having problems. Amen? It takes time uh, for an individual to grow up in Christ. It takes time for an individual to to be sanctified, to be set apart for God's use only. Years, in fact, it takes time. And one never stops growing in him. Now, one never stops learning in him. There's always areas of improvement. Uh, we've never reached the utopia, so to speak, <laughs> where I say I got it all together, uh, that, that, that I need no other learning. I, I've, I've learned all the lessons. No, we don't ever get to that point. Amen? So, as we begin to look at the scriptures here today, um, uh, in the beginning of the verses of Hebrews chapter number 12, let us, let us just read uh, uh, from the beginning. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now Paul is encouraging us uh, uh, because what God has done for us is so great, so mighty, amen, so wonderful, that we ought to run this race with patience, amen, with endurance. And, and, and we ought to also lay aside uh, the weights and the sin that does so easily beset us, that causes us to stumble and fall. And uh, my point tonight is, is that God reveals to us weights and sin so that we have to lay it aside. Uh, and those weights are things that we put on ourselves uh, that God never intended for us to carry. Uh, because he, he said, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, and we all know what sin is, the transgression of the word of God. Now, God is active. He never uh, 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 saved us not to be inactive in our lives. God's eyes go to and fro beholding the things that are done upon this earth, the things that we do, and 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 quiet is kept. Uh, we have angels that are assigned unto us. Not only do they guard us, but they report as witnesses, <laughs> if need be, against us. <laughs> uh, you follow what I'm saying? Because uh, uh, some people think they do things in darkness and are never seen or never known, but that's not true. Amen, God sees everything. The night and the day are the same unto your God. Amen, hallelujah, my God. All right, so we see here Paul is encouraging us, and I want to encourage you also, amen. Hallelujah, all right, read verse number two. Looking unto Jesus, uh -huh. the author and finisher of our faith. All right, now we gotta, Look unto who? Jesus. Jesus uh, the mediator, our forerunner, 
And he says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus, he begot your faith. Amen. Our faith rests and resides in him. And he's the finisher of your faith. In other words, he's the end of your faith. He's the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and the omega. Amen. He's the beginning and the end of your faith. All right. So, so as him as the forerunner, uh, he says, looking unto him, unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of your faith. Read. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Uh huh. Despising the shame. Yes. And is set down on the right hand of the, of the throne of God. Now, Jesus realized that, if you allow me to say it this way, that he was in a race. Amen? That, that, that he had to do the will of him that sent him. Amen? And within that, there was opposition. There was testing. Huh? The Bible says he learned obedience through the things that he was. So he suffered some things. And, if, and we're going to suffer some things, right? Huh? And if we don't suffer with him, we won't do what? Reign with him. All right? Now, notice how Jesus dealt with suffering. Huh? Notice. He says, uh, 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 looking unto Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So, so he looked at the end of the thing. Amen? To realize that, that what he's going through and what he was suffering is, is, is something that, that he had to endure and that at the end he would receive the crown. He would receive the prize. We have to do the same. The things that we endure in this life, the things that we go through, don't look at your present suffering or your present pain as the end. Look at the end of the thing that, that you realize that the things that are happening to me, God is working some things out, and at the end, I'm going to receive a crown. I'm going to receive a prize. And at the end, it's going to be worth it. Amen? To just to hear him say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. In other words, as the scripture says in the book of James, Count it all joy. Amen? Not, not, not what you're going through is joy, but, but the end result of that is yielding something. Huh? That, is, that God is working in you, huh? both the will and the do of his good pleasure. That God's hand is upon you. That you've been chosen. Amen? That, that God picked you out. Huh? And not to pick on you, so that, but, so that you can be the apple of his eye. Amen? So that you can enjoy the inheritance of the saints. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So notice then. He said, who for the joy that was set before him. Amen? There's some joy set before you. There's some prizes set before you. There's some great precious promises set before you. So then, with that in mind, he endured the cross, meaning that he suffered the pain and the, and, and the agony and the shame. Amen? And went on through it, realizing that in the end, he was going to receive a crown, if you allow me to say it that way. All right, read. Two again. Yes. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, Endure the cross. He endured the cross. Despising the shame. You got to endure your crosses. You got to despise the shame. And then sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. And where Jesus is seated, you are seated as well. Amen. The Bible says we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. All right. Here we go. Now we're getting into our Bible study. I just wanted to bring that back to your remembrance as, as, as what we talked about last week. All right? Uh, verse number three. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, uh -huh. that she be weary and faint in your mind. Now, 
the, the, the worst thing that you can do on this road is to become weary and faint in your own mind. Amen? Now notice how he said it. Uh, to become tired in your mind. Amen? To become weary in your mind. The enemy attacks our mind. Amen? Uh, so we got to guard our heart with what? All diligence. Why? Because out of it comes the issues of life. Amen? Uh, you got to guard your heart. You got to watch. Amen? Now, you don't want to become weary and faint. Faint means to give up, uh, to throw in the towel. You never want to do that. Uh, if, 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 I'm going to say it like this. If the enemy or even your own mind or your friends are telling you to give up on Christ, if you reject them. Uh, rebuke that thought. Uh, why? Because that's not the answer. Giving up is not the answer. Drawing back is not the answer. Because he says, I have no pleasure in them that do what? Draw back. Amen? Hallelujah. That's not the answer. Perseverance is the answer. Walking by faith and not by sight is the answer. Holding on until your change comes. That's the answer. Amen? Hallelujah. That's the answer. God never intended for us to give up. Huh? God never intended for us to throw in the towel. Am I right? Hallelujah. My God. All right. Deacon Field? Well, I was thinking it's saying that um, we're not doing this on our own strength. No. Nope. We should consider him. Yes. Because uh, if we begin to start thinking we're doing it on our own, we're, we're, we're going to get weary. Mm hmm. But Absolutely. Have, but through Him, we can do all things. Through Christ, we do all things that strengthens you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Huh? So, so keep Him in mind and and walk in truth. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible class tonight is really going to deal with God revealing truth unto us about ourselves to keep us in line, amen, to help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why? Because we got some uh, enemies out there uh, 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 that will try to deceive us and we can try to deceive ourselves, amen? And we have to realize that, that I have to stick with Christ. I have to walk with the Lord uh, at all costs. Am I right? And then you have to encourage yourself uh, to walk with the Lord. Uh, you've got to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah, my God. Because this thing, this thing is precious. Uh, all right? So he says, uh, what verse are we in? We're in uh, Hebrews chapter number uh, 12. And verse number what? Yes, read three. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your mind. All right, now consider Christ, what he has gone through, right? And so that, so that you don't become weary in your mind and faint and give up. Y'all with me? All right, read. Verse 4. Yes. You have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Now, you, you may have, uh, somebody may have hit you, and, and you may have bled, but you didn't bleed like Christ. <laughs> huh? You weren't wounded for transgression. Amen? You weren't persecuted and, and uh, uh, offered up as a sacrifice for sin like him. All right, read. Yeah. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. All right. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, uh -huh. nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Now, here we go. When, when God deals with us, God deals with us on a level of truth. 
Huh? And, and on a level of maturity. Now, God knows, the Bible says, that he won't put no more on us than what we can bear. Am I right? God knows, he knows how to speak to us and to deal with us to bring us to a level of sanctification. Sanctification is a process. It takes time to know how and to learn how to walk with God. Amen? So, 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 read that verse again. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you uh -huh. as unto children. Now, Paul is, is saying the saints that he's writing to, they have forgotten uh, the exhortation. That exhortation, that word there means encouragement, instruction. Uh, don't, don't, don't forget the instruction and the encouragement that you've heard down through the years concerning Christ and the reward that, that he has in store for you. Never forget that you are in a race, that, that you are on the Lord's side, that the Lord is on your side, huh? and that what he has for you uh, is far greater than whatever the world can offer. Huh? Uh, don't forget that exhortation. Uh, don't, don't ever allow yourself to come to a point where you have forgotten why you are in this race. Uh, why you are here. Why God has saved you. Why God has brought you to this point. Amen? Now, uh, uh, he says, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Now, God, his aim and his purpose is to save you at any cost. Huh? At any cost, God wants to save you. And his chastisement or his instruction and his correction is never meant to destroy you, but to give you his expected end. Uh, God knows the thoughts that he thinks toward you. And those thoughts are not thoughts of evil, but they're good thoughts so that he can bring you to his expected end. Uh, God, God's expected end for you is to receive eternal life. Uh, and to live with him forever. Hallelujah. You with me? Hallelujah. So God leads us on this journey. We're on this journey. And, and God, God has established rules and laws and, and, and his word to help us along this journey. Not to destroy us, but to keep us in line. Uh, to keep us focused. Uh, to, to cause us to, to, to be achievers and overcomers. Amen? Uh, and, 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 and God never intended his word to destroy you. Am I right? But to build you up. <laughs> Hallelujah. To, to cause you to be strong in the Lord uh, and in the power of his might. And, and if God sees you going astray, he has to correct us. Huh? He has to bring us back on the straight and narrow. Am I right? What did Jesus say? He said, straight is the gate. Huh? And, and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. Huh? And how many find it? Few find it. But broad is the way. And wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. And how many find that? Many. Uh, many. We've got to stay on the straight and narrow. Uh, and so God, he, he keeps us on the straight and narrow if you receive his correction. If you receive his instruction. Uh, if you walk in his truth. Amen. Hallelujah. You know they got a saying out. Uh, uh, living her truth. 
living his truth. Uh, we don't want to do that. Uh, I don't want to live my truth. Uh, uh, you don't want to live your truth. You want to live God's truth. Uh, because our own truth can be deceptive. Uh, in fact, ooh, let, me, let me bring it home a little stronger. Our truth is deceptive. Uh, because we're flawed individuals. We need God's help. Amen. I need God's help. Uh, do you need God's help? Hallelujah. I need his help. I need God to help me. Lead me and guide me. Huh? Hallelujah. Because sometimes I make choices based on my feelings and my emotions. Huh? And every time you make choices based on your feelings and emotions, you're ready for a, a, a destruction. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the ways of a man are right in his own eyes. Huh? Hallelujah. Y'all with me tonight? Huh? So I need God to guide me. Huh? I need God to correct me. Huh? I'd rather be corrected by God than be corrected by man. Huh? I'd rather humble myself. Hallelujah. Than, 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 than have God to, 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 to send uh, some judgment upon me to humble me. Amen. But you've got to learn these things. Huh? Hallelujah. Now, now, can I take it a little deeper? Huh? When, I, when, I, when I begin to learn some things about God huh? and, and learn that whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And I, and I understand that principle. It'll help me make decisions huh? to avoid trouble. Huh? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Huh? When I understand whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. It'll help me to keep my hands to myself. Yes. It'll help me to be quiet. It'll, it'll stop me from stealing. Yes. Huh? It'll stop me from lying. Right. Huh? You follow me? Yes. It'll stop me from doing that which is evil and wicked in the sight of God. When I understand that principle, amen? And, and when I understand the, the principle of God that, that, that yeah, God is merciful, God is kind, but, but he will uh, allow me to escape. Huh? Hallelujah. We, I can't take advantage of, of, of God's graciousness and his mercy thinking that I can get a pass. Huh? You don't get a pass over here with God. Hallelujah. You follow me? If I'm thinking, oh, I'm the pastor of the church so I can get a pass. Huh? I'm the king of Israel so I can get a pass. David never got a pass. Huh? God's prophets never got a pass. Amen. Uh, we can't get a pass huh? just because uh, we're, we, we're connected to him. Huh? Uh, that's the truth. Huh? Am I right? Hallelujah. Now, now let's look at it. He says, read what you said, my son. My son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Now, when when, when you've done something that's against the will of God and God starts to correct you and to instruct you, don't despise it. Huh? Don't, don't go somewhere and have a pity party. Don't start backing up and, and wanting to throw in the towel. Huh? Don't give up. Y'all know how we are. We think sometimes uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm guilty, but God, you shouldn't, you shouldn't send me through what you're sending me through. Huh? Is God unjust? No. Huh? Is God unrighteous? No. <laughs> uh, but no. So, so, so accept huh, the, the correction. Accept the instruction so that you can mature. Yes. So that you can grow. So that you don't make the same mistake twice. Amen? Amen. Huh? All right. Notice what he said. He says, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Read. Nor faint when thou art rebuked. Now, don't give up when he rebukes you. Amen? Walk in truth. Don't throw in the towel. Don't stop coming to church. <laughs> Don't stop acting mean. <laughs> huh? Amen. Am I right? Y'all know how we are. Mm -hmm. Huh? You know how you are. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I was going to say that uh, 
children, you may have to put in um, quality. By the way. Oh, no. You can't, you know, as they get too old, it becomes hard to put things into them. You know, uh, so when people get into the church, they need, that's when they are baby, they need to be, that's when they need the most direction. Mm -hmm. That's when they need the most guidance. And that's teaching. true. Uh, it's hard to teach old people that think they know everything. <laughs> and, and, and the word of God says, don't despise his chastening, his correction. Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right, read. What verse are we in? Six. Six? Read. For whom the Lord loveth, he chases. Now notice, that's, that's key. If you've done some things that are wrong, if you've done some things that are evil, God's going to correct you. And he's going to correct you because he loves you. Yes. Amen? Amen. The love of God. Amen? Amen. That's, that's, that's redemptive. God's love is redemptive. It's transformational. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right? He says, for whom the Lord loveth, he what? He chases. He, he instructs you. That's what the word chasteneth means, instruction. And then if you don't adhere to the instruction, he takes it to another level. You don't, you don't have to allow God to take it to another level. You with me? Read. What does it say? Whom the Lord loveth, he what? He chasteneth. Uh-huh. Now, that scourging is the next level. It means whipping. You don't, you don't have to go through that level. Just receive the instruction. Y'all with me? I was... You know how you got those easy, uh, riding on the highway now, they don't take your money. They send you a uh, toll ticket in the mail. Mm -hmm. Give you, yeah, easy pass. And they, they give you a certain time period to pay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't pay it, then they increase it yeah. by a ridiculous amount. Yeah. Huh? I got one, the, the pass was about $6. And I didn't pay it on time. The penalty was $50. I'm like, what? Highway <laughs> bribery, <laughs> not without a gun. <laughs> so, so they sent me the instruction first. Say, okay, you owe this amount? Uh, pay it. I, 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 I ignored it. I ignored it. Then, a month later, I got that $50 one in the mail. That's a scourging. <laughs> they whipped me. Huh? And what did I do? Paid it. <laughs> Plus, the six or whatever original amount was. I paid it with interest. Huh? What I just should have did right in the beginning. Huh? Same way with us in our walk with God. Huh? God tells us what we need. Huh? And if I, if I ignore it, it's going to be worse. It's like you got a house. You got a little hole in the roof. You ignore it. It's going to get bigger. <laughs> huh? It's going to get worse. And the repair is going to be more costly. Amen? So it's better. This is God. This is God. God wants us to take heed in the beginning. Now, what's going to be the proof that I learned my lesson?
más. Huh? So, 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 what's going to be the proof that I learned my lesson that God is trying to teach me? That when I'm confronted with it, I do the right thing. Notice, I like what Mother David said, and I like what you said the first time. She said, right away. Huh? Do it right away. That's a level of maturity. Why, why wrestle with the will of God trying to get him to change his mind? God is not going to change his mind. Huh? Oh, yes! <laughs> it did. <laughs> it did. It hurt. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Come on! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I may even just start riding routes trying to get to where I want to go. Avoid the tolls. I'm just <laughs> but you know, you can't do that either. <laughs> just make up your mind and do right. Avoid the trouble. Cancel. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, life is going by. There's so many things that occupy your mind and stuff like that. You can forget. You can. Yes. I, I get a ticket. I try to pay it immediately because I put it in the gun compartment. I might forget to. Yes. That's life. happened to me. <laughs> but you'll get reminded. You walk hey, out and you see a boot on your car. <laughs> Absolutely. You'll be reminded. Amen? That's what God is saying to us. That, that walk in truth. Don't ignore the warning sign. Don't get, try, to, try to take advantage of God. Uh, because he's merciful, he's loving, he's long-suffering, but he's also a consuming fire. Uh, he's also righteous. Huh? He's also just, and he has no respect of person. Huh? And me trying to get God to change who he is, that'll destroy everything. When I mean destroy everything, his whole plan of salvation, who he is. Huh? From, from, not, not from the beginning, but before the beginning. You understand what I'm saying? And, and God corrects us because he loves us. Amen. Now notice what Paul said. Read that verse again. Where you at? Verse 6. Uh-huh. For whom the Lord loves us. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 and verse 6. For whom the Lord loves he chases. Uh-huh. And scourges every son he receives. Now, if you're getting scourged by the Lord, Rejoice in the fact that you're his son and he has received you. Huh? That, that, that he's not going to allow you to go so far off the reservation without bringing you back. Amen? Hallelujah. I know it me. Go ahead. I was going to say, just like in the natural. Uh huh. If your parents tell you to do something, you don't do it. They get you for it. They get you for it. Uh -huh. And it doesn't feel good. Right. The Lord is the same way. The same way. Get you. Hmm? Sometimes the parents will say, I'm going to get you for the other day, too. <laughs> I'm going to double up on you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And y'all got some parents that say, I'm going to get you when, you, when I get home. Mm -hmm. huh? and, and you get in bed thinking they forgot. <laughs> and they meet you. Uh, 
Huh? And, and, and this is how the Lord deals with me. Uh, I can speak about myself. When, 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 when I'm not doing something right, the Lord will visit me quick. Uh, get me quick. Say, Frank, now you know. Uh, you know better. Uh, uh, you need to uh, stop with that attitude. Uh, you need to straighten yourself up. Do right. Uh, if, 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 if I didn't treat somebody right, now you know. You know better. Quick! It ain't, days ain't going by. Uh, come on, quick! Uh, does he deal with y'all like that? <laughs> he gets you like that? Lie! Lie! And I say, oh God, forgive me. Uh, and then, if, it, if it's something that I feel like I need to call the individual, I'll call the individual. Hey, forgive me. I, I, didn't, I didn't say the right stuff. My attitude wasn't right. Uh, why? Because I want to be clear with God. I love the individual. I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? But, but I love God. Uh, and I want to be right with him. Uh, and if I'm not right with you, I'm not right with him. Isn't that the truth? Oh, I was reading this, it says, for he know it by praying. He remembers that we are dust. Yes. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. Mm. And his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his commandments, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's contingent. <laughs> Absolutely. Do we believe that? Amen. Would you read that uh, scripture out of Psalm 103? Yeah. And and God amended his word because when he said it goes to the children's children, he'll show his mercy. Uh, and uh, he amended it in this respect that 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 now uh, uh, because the children of Israel were taking advantage of God's mercy and 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 they were complaining that my teeth are, 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 are set on edge like sour grapes uh, and God 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 basically they were accusing God of being unjust and unfair. So God basically said, now every tub is going to sit on its own bottom. Uh, that, 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 that if you do wrong, uh, I'm going to get you. If you do right, I'm going to bless you. You follow? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It's good to know the word. Amen. Huh? It's good to know the word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? And to put it into action. Absolutely. And, and, and to know that God loves you. Amen. Huh? So, so he's not going to allow you to get away with stuff. Because he's trying to save you. Amen? We ought to rejoice in that. Go ahead. We ought to give God glory in that. Am I right? Hallelujah. Why? Because I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to deceive myself. Amen? All right, let's move on. Where are we at? What verse are we in? All right, read. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as, as with sons. Uh-huh. For what son is he whom the Father chastened? Now, he said, if you endure the correction of God, if you go through the process, God deals with you as his child, his son. Amen? Don't, ain't that what we want to be? Huh? Now, he said, uh, read the last part of that verse. For what son is he whom the father chases him not? Uh -huh. now, now, every father should correct their children. 
Am I right? Yeah. What happens to your children if you don't correct them? Yeah, yeah. be spoiled, be entitled, be little brats, as, as he said. Huh? Do, right. Do think, think that they can do whatever. Yeah, and get away with it. Huh? And, and notice, they'll never fulfill their purpose.
Huh? They're trying to figure it out. Huh? Too young to understand. They trying to test the waters. That, that makes the child. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I don't mean to uh, take over, but go ahead. But that, that makes a child. Uh, all right. It makes it, you know. It's like it, it, it doesn't make the child psychologically good. Right. You know because they need, if you're you want to parent, but you're not teaching me nothing. Right. You want to discipline me, but you're not uh, laying those rules and so you want me to give you respect, and I, I, I don't think you deserve it. So it becomes, uh, <laughs> I would say, as a child's perspective. Oh, child's perspective. Not, you, need to do what, you need to do what you need to do in order to gain that respect. My God, you push the limits, bro, all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now, uh, if... If you're supervising somebody, or you help to mentoring somebody, you know, uh, you should work with them. Huh? And because they may not get it in the beginning. And because the individual doesn't get it in the beginning, do you throw them away? No. Huh? God doesn't throw us away. Huh? Yeah, I hear you, uh, Sister Margaret. Praise God. He doesn't throw us away. Huh? He's the potter and we're the clay. Huh? And he knows we're marred. Huh? But he'll, he'll, he'll make us over. Huh? We have to uh, uh, work with each other. Amen. Amen. That's the reason why you got gifts. That's why you got the anointing. Huh? That's why uh, you got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Huh? The nature of God in you. Amen. So that you can be like Him. Amen. Have you ever thought about that? Amen. I am to be like God in my dealings with my fellow man. Yep. Yes. Amen. And you got power to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We all good? Yeah. All right, let's move on. Go ahead. Eight. Eight? But if ye be without chastisement. No, all right, now, if you be without chastisement. Whereof all are partakers. Uh huh. Then are you bastards and not sons. And that word bastard there means an illegitimate son. Illegitimate. <laughs> Born out of wedlock. Illegitimate. Not a true son. Not a true dog. Hmm? I don't want to be that. Hey Amen. You don't want to be that. So you've got to take correction. Now, we get a little deep here. I'm doing the thing that God hates. Three, four years. Won't receive the correction. Won't receive the instruction. When do I become illegitimate? When do I become a bastard? God trying to correct me three years. When do I become a bastard? When do I become illegitimate? When he gives up on you. Huh? When he gives up on you. When he gives up on you. It ain't what the scriptures say. It ain't, it ain't what the scriptures say. When you don't accept chastisement. Well, yeah. When, when you're not receiving the correction. When you're not receiving the rebuke. Now that's a shame. That's something you think about. God trying to pull me out. God trying to correct me. And I refuse. I'm going to do what I want to do. When do I become illegitimate? 
When do I become a better? <laughs> you, I would say we need to do because he said, whoever you choose to do a better, that's your time. Whoever you yield your members to obey, that's whose servant you are to whom you obey. This word is tight. Now that was a shaver right there. That wasn't in my notes. I can't even go. <laughs> All right, read. Uh -huh. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Uh -huh. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Now, we give men reverence for straightening us out. Aren't we not the more to give God reverence for straightening us out, to respect Him, to love Him? We're talking about walking in truth. I agree. For they verify for a few days chastened us. For they verily, I'm sorry. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. Now, they, they, they got us because of their own desires. Because of their own will. Because of their own laws. You as a parent got rules in your house. Huh? That you make up. Uh, and your children don't follow them, so, so the reason why you're getting them is to, to cause them to, to do what you desire. Embarrass you. Well, not necessarily embarrass you, hopefully not, you know, but some parents do. Huh? Some pre parents are like that. Am I right? In other words, not all parents are good parents. But is God a good father? Huh? All the time. <laughs> Somebody said he's the best. Wow. Do we believe that? Yeah. Wow. That's another revelation. Go ahead. I know in the book of Peter. He come on shot. In the book of Peter it says the long suffering of God yeah. is unto salvation. Yeah. And so God will suffer with us a long time. A long time. Try to get us to do what is right because it's his will that no man should perish. Absolutely. Thank you. But he won't strive with us always. No. Ain't that something? And God is always trying to get us on the right track. Always. We should be happy about that. And 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 submit to him. Don't be weary in faith when thou art corrected and instructed by him. Receive it with meekness and with joy. Say, Lord, I thank you. Have you ever, uh, I see you, Sister Margaret, have you ever uh, 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 almost been in an accident? And you'd be like, whoa. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so glad that that didn't happen to me. Uh, and, and that's what God wants to do for us. To stop us from destroying ourselves. To save us. Amen? For our own good. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm not quite sure if I understand that they chase us after their own pleasure. What is their own pleasure? To get you to uh, your parents... They, they got their own house rules and they try to uh, get you to do their house rules to make them happy for their own pleasure. But that might not be good, depending on the parent. Yep, depending on what the rule is. If, if they want you to make your bed in the morning for their soul so that they can be happy, you know, that's, that's good. But if they try to get you to do something evil, that's bad. That's what I was saying. Right. There's some parents. <laughs> oh Lord, I got to move on. Okay. okay. I mean, they shouldn't have mercy too sometimes. You know. <laughs> I mean, I remember when I was supposed to be home like at uh, midnight. It was like one minute after midnight. I'm like, how you know if that clock ain't right? Yeah, I got, I got mercy too. <laughs> but, but you know, uh, sometimes I think it's good for a parent to show mercy. 
Absolutely. Go ahead. Read. What verse are you in? 10, 12, and 10. For they barely for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. Uh huh. But he, but he for our profit. Now, they do it for their pleasure. God does it for our benefit. Everything that God uh, does for you and through you is for your benefit. Because he loves us. Amen? Read. But he for our prophet that we might be partakers of his holiness. I read. Now no chastening for the present seem to be joy. Now when, when I'm going through instruction and correction, uh, it doesn't feel good. It's not meant to feel good. Huh? It's meant to feel bad so you can remember it. Huh? <laughs> so then, when, when you're about to do it again, you got, oh, Jesus, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to do that again. I remember. Whoo. <laughs> now, no serene. Huh? And then, and then, you know, he wants you to get like Joseph. Huh? Wherein uh, uh, Potiphar's wife uh, uh, tried to tempt him. He remembered his God. Huh? And he fled. He ran. Huh? When, when you are being tempted, remember your God. And, and, and flee. Run. Was Joseph a coward? Was he a punk? No. He said, I ain't going to partake in this mess. I'm getting out of here. Uh, and then when, when, when the trouble came as a result of his decision, God was with him. God delivered him. Huh? Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Amen. Go ahead. Is that a way of transformation of your mind, transforming your mind? Yeah. You know, in other words, when you... Speak out about the pain is, is, is like to, 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 to get your attention to know it doesn't feel good. Right. So that's, tra that's a transformation of your mind when you're running from trouble to let you know you don't want to go through that pain. And, 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 and once you get through it, that's victory. So Absolutely. your mind has been transformed. Absolutely. So when that uh, particular opportunity comes up again, you remember, no, I'm not going to go there because I know what it's all about. Absolutely. And I'm going to say it this way. I, I thank you for that, uh, Mother David. Uh, Y'all may think I'm hard when I say this, but we should not be rescuing everybody. Uh, individual got money, not paying their rent. Uh, they spend their money on stuff, foolishness, frivolous. Uh, they come to you, say, can you pay my rent? Uh, can you let me borrow somebody to pay my rent? Uh, nothing wrong with saying, nope. Uh, let them feel the pain. Yeah. Sometimes you learn the hard way. Uh, absolutely. And, 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 and sometimes we try to step in as God when God trying to hold, uh, 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 show them uh, something. When God trying to teach them. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't like uh, <laughs> uh, uh, waking my children up. Say, hey, you got to get up. Go to school. Got to get up. Go to work. I want them to learn. Huh? Why am I saying, well, man, that's, that's, that's petty. Wake them up. Tell them to get up. But if you keep waking them up, <laughs> when they going to learn to wake up? <laughs> huh? When they gonna learn to get up? Well, you late. Why you late? Mama didn't wake me up. Daddy didn't wake me up. Nobody woke me up. They blame it on us. People, we blame stuff on other people. We blame.
blame stuff on the devil. Yeah. Ain't that what Adam did? Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the devil. Yeah. Poor devil didn't have nobody to blame. <laughs> huh? Accountability. Feel the pain. Make the right decision. Teaching moment. Hmm? I remember I started out preaching. And, and uh, I was preaching a sermon and uh, the anointing was coming up on me. I felt God moving. And I said, hold on, Lord, not yet. I ain't ready. Oh. Woo! The anointing abated. And I said, okay, God, I'm ready now. <laughs> and I was hung out there by myself. <laughs> uh, no anointing. Uh, nothing. I'm like, I ain't going to do that again. <laughs> that was dumb. <laughs> he let me feel the pain. Yes, hmm? Dumb. Y'all with me? Oh yeah. Let uh, God allow you to feel the pain. Mm -hmm. Learn from the pain. Huh? Learn from the heartache. Am I right? Because you can help somebody. Let's say hypothetically, you've been taught how to budget your money. Your parents like taught you how to budget your money. You know, do this and that. Somebody else might not have been taught that. You know, and if they come to you and they need help, it's like you know, I'm gonna help you next time you get paid. I ain't helping you. The next time you get paid, come over here and I'll show you how to. Manage your money. Nothing wrong with that. So you won't uh, be in this predicament again. You still should try to help people if you can. Nothing wrong with that, but don't miss my point. Don't rescue people who continually uh, are making bad decisions that don't want to do right. They're purposely. Right. That's the point. Let them go through it. Yeah. Hmm? That's where the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Right. Don't yeah. enable folk. I ain't saying don't help folk. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Don't mm enable. -hmm. Right. That's a fine line. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't help you out with your rent once or twice. Now you coming back to me at the third time. Now your situation may be grave, dangerous. You may be getting the padlock on it. Had to go to the shelter. You gotta say, well, they got bed at the shelter. They got food at the shelter. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Got and in fact, now. You go to the shelter, they give you more help. <laughs> huh? You follow? Right! Right! I used to work at the jail. I used to hear them uh, talking to their girlfriends, talking to their mother and father. They'd be like, uh, uh, they're going to kill me up in here. Uh, I, need, I need you to get me out. Huh? Uh, uh, they threatened me. They beat me up. Huh? You know, I'm hungry. I got, I got, I need some medical attention. All of that, what they said, they got in that jail. They got medical attention for you. They got food for you. Uh, they got guards to help protect you if they're doing right. <laughs> you follow me? Huh? They give you clothes. Huh? You gotta follow some rules. Yeah. Hopefully, now, when you get out, you remember. Amen. 
Some folk do. Huh? But it's good to remember. Am I right? All right, read. Where we at? All right, 11. Where we at? Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. All right. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Now, when I learn my lesson, it makes me better. When you learn your lesson, it makes you better. It yields fruit in your life. Am I right? That's what we want. I don't want to be ever learning and never come to the knowledge of the truth. Huh? I want to, when I go through my tests and my trials, I want to learn from them and get better. I don't want to continue around the same mountain. Can I say something? Yes. Go. Do it. Get, get you, get, uh, get you a different test. Don't keep going through the same test. Pass that test and get another test. <laughs> Waste the time. Don't stay in the same test 20 years. Graduate from that test. Go to another. Y'all with me? Learn from the present test so you can pass it and go on to the next test. Amen? Well, I look like 15 years old in kindergarten. That's a problem. That's a problem. Huh? 21 year old in high school. Yeah! <laughs> That's a problem! Huh? Go ahead. Question. The peaceful fruits, the peaceful fruits they talk about here, righteousness and the fruits of the spirits, is, is, is the same? Is it Correct. Right. Correct among them. Yes. When you, when you exercise and do what's right, God rewards you and you, you develop more of the fruit of the Spirit. Patience, joy, long-suffering. How do you develop long-suffering? By suffering. <laughs> huh? Huh? How do you develop your joy? By, by going through some hard times and learning to appreciate what you have. Being content. Amen? Go ahead. Always compare our suffering to what Jesus went through. Absolutely. Hallelujah. All right, read. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down uh -huh. from the feeble knees. Now, now here he's exhorting us, encouraging us. Huh? Don't, don't walk through here with a pity party because you're going through. Huh? Because you're suffering. Uh, and and uh, uh, be 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 happy, rejoice, give thanks. I read. And make straight paths for your feet, mm -hmm. lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Mm -hmm. But let it rather be healed. Yes, read. Here we go. Follow peace with all men. Uh huh. And holiness without the which no man. Now, what, what, what Paul is saying here is, he's literally telling us not to be troublemakers. He's not focused on people causing you trouble and you living peaceably with them. He's talking about you not being a troublemaker, not causing problems for anybody else. Stay in your own lane. Appreciate what God has given you and done for you. Y'all follow me? Because notice what he said. 
Follow peace with all men and holiness, without the which no man shall what? See the Lord. Verse 15, what's it say? Look at you diligently, lest any man fall fail of the grace of God. Now, you've got to look diligently on Christ, lest you fail and fall from the grace of God. Don't be a stumbling block. Don't be a troublemaker. Hmm? Don't be the weak link. Be strong in the Lord. Am I right? Read that verse again. Follow peace with all men. Uh huh. And holiness without the which no man shall see the Lord. Read. Looking diligently, lest any man, any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness bringing up trouble you, mm -hmm. and thereby many be defied. Now notice that those those verses go together. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Without the which, no man shall see the Lord. Now, if I don't receive correction and instruction from God, he's saying in that latter verse, at least any bitter root spring up in you. Meaning that I'm not receiving correction and instruction from God, now I'm bitter. Now I'm mad and angry. <clears throat> That's a bitter root. And, and, and if I'm not following peace, with all men and holiness, I can cause other people to become defiled. Y'all see it? So, so I gotta live my life as not to cause trouble. Follow peace with who? Everybody.
through 40. I want you to see Esau. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, uh -huh. and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also. Now notice, notice, he cried with a bitter cry. It's not that Esau wasn't remorseful about what he'd done, but it was too late to reverse it. You don't want to be out there so much, so long, that it becomes too late for it to be reversed. Are we? And he said, thy brother came with subtlety uh -huh. and hath taken away thy blessing. Huh? Jacob was like the devil. Came and stole the blessing away. Don't allow the devil to deceive you to de steal your blessing away. Read. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? Huh? Supplanter. Read. For he has supplanted me these two times. Trickster. Deceiver. That's what the devil is. He's a trickster. He's a deceiver. Read. Now notice. He has, he has tricked me these two times. When was he ever going to learn? Huh? When are we going to learn? Y'all with me? Devil doesn't mean us any good. Am I right? Hallelujah. All right, read. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. Uh, now, he, he, he stripped it. Took not only his birthright, uh, uh, which is to be honored, but he also took away his blessing as well. <laughs> the devil's after your birthright, and he's after your blessings as well. <laughs> Trying to strip you of everything. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read. What verse we in? 36. Uh huh. And he said, Has thou not reserved a blessing for me? <laughs> and Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord. Uh huh. And all his brethren have I given to him for service. Yeah. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. Mm. And what shall I do? All the blessings are gone. There's nothing left for you. Follow? And what, what the Lord wants us to get out of this is, is that he had gone too far. And it is irreversible. It's unchanging. Though he sought it with tears. It's done. Read. Hold on. I'm kitchen. Hold on. And Esau said unto his father, uh -huh. Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Mm. Bless me, even me also. O oh, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Cry, Lord, change it. Turn it around. I'll appreciate it now. I'll receive the instruction and correction now. Sought it with tears. Read. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, mm. and of the dew of heaven from above. Mm -hmm. And by thy sword shall thou live, and shall serve thy brother. Mm. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off, his, off thy neck. In other words, he didn't get the real blessing. He got the, the scraps. You follow? Sought it with tears. Dig it, Phil? Let's go back. We almost done. I was saying, because you probably didn't he sold his birthright to his brother, you know, um, 
in that respect. He, he yielded himself to be his brother's servant. He did that of his own. And, and a lot of times, like, we get the Holy Ghost, you know, uh, we give it up. The Holy Ghost <laughs> is there to be used, but if you don't use it, you lose it. And it's your fault, you know? And we went, ah, oh, you know? It, it's, up, it's up to us to maintain and keep whatever it is that God has given us. His brother took uh, two blessings away from him. He, he tricked him to get his birthright, mm -hmm. and then he pretended to be him to get his blessing. Mm -hmm. right. That's why the Bible says he stole. That's what the enemy comes to do. Steal, kill, and to what? Destroy. Make you his servant. Y'all with me? All right, read. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, back in Hebrews. Read 17 again. Well, you know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing. Now, when Esau would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. He was what? Reject. If we don't receive correction and instruction from God, we will be rejected. Read. For he found no place of repentance. Uh-huh. So he sought it carefully with tears. Now, that's not saying that Esau didn't repent. It was it's saying that es Esau's blessing was given away. And it was irreversible. Can y'all handle something? Let's go over to Hebrews chapter number 6. People don't believe this. That, that, that God is graceful. He's gracious. He's merciful. He's love. But you can overstay the day of grace. All right, read. Start with verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. All right, now, leave the principles of the doctrine. Let us go on to perfection. Go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. Uh-huh. All right, stop, stop, stop uh, sinning. Lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. Read. And the faith toward God. Uh-huh. Of the doctrine of baptism. Mm-hmm. And of laying on of hands. Yeah. Uh -huh. And of eternal judgment. Mm. And this will we do if God permits. Read. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened. Here we go. It's impossible. That's in your Bible. It's impossible for those who were enlightened that God has been instructing, giving correction to, and they're rejecting it. Read. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. Uh huh. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And have tasted the good word of God. My God. And the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away. Uh huh. To renew them again and to repentance. Mm hmm. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God of Christ. Now, if I keep turning away from Christ, where does that leave me? Where does that leave you? Even if you come to a point in seeking repentance with tears, if, if, if you turn away from Christ, where is your help coming from? You ain't going to get no help. He's the end of all righteousness. He's the end of all faith. He's the end of all redemption. So now listen, why not is it imperative for me to listen to him? Do I need him? Huh? Do I need him? Huh? Can I live without him? So let him be your Lord. 
I'll surrender to him at all costs. Even if I gotta oppose myself, I'm not gonna oppose him. Huh? You can't make it on your own. I, I like that song. I can't live without him. I can't make it without him. I need him. Huh? I need him. Huh? I, I'm not gonna, uh, people uh, 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 debate about those verses which we just read, but I'm not gonna uh, uh, risk it uh, and, and do what I wanna do and, and see well in the end what he's gonna do for me. He's gonna say, depart. <laughs> huh? Go ahead. Hard. Woo. You turn from God. Woo. <laughs> Only thing you can look forward to is, is the devil. That's it. And he ain't going to help you at all. My God. Now, we're talking tonight about walking in truth, right? So if I'm having a hard time huh, in Christ, you follow me? And y'all know what I mean when he told Paul, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Resist his will. Huh? That's what he's talking about. Now, if I'm resisting the will of God and I'm having a hard time, the scripture says if, uh, the way of a transgressor is hard, his word is true. So that tells me if I'm wise, repent. <laughs> Repentance is, is, is the call of the day. Huh? It's the call of the hour. Huh? There's power in repentance. Huh? If I repent, that doesn't mean I'm weak. That means I know God. Huh? That I know God is able. Huh? That, that, that I'm trusting God will help me. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, uh, we can't look at people repenting as weak folk. Uh, it takes strength to repent. Huh? Come on here. Y'all believe that? It takes strength to repent. It takes strength to say you need help. It takes strength to come boldly to the throne of grace. It takes strength to call on the name of the Lord. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. That's what God is expecting for everybody. Everybody. To come to repentance. Yes. Because all have sinned. Yes. And have uh, come <laughs> short. Yeah. God wants everybody to repent. Everybody. And that's something everybody's not going to do. Nope. He got, why? 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 Why won't people repent? Because of our flesh. Our flesh? What's in our flesh? We pride. pride. <laughs> Wickedness. Stubbornness. I want to have it my way. This ain't Burger King. <laughs> huh? Oh, is that McDonald's? Huh? You can't have it your way and have it God have his way. Huh? Who? I can't, uh, uh, Elder Grady, I can't counsel God uh, and try to change his mind. Huh? Can't do it. Uh, all things are settled. <laughs> all all people will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But Absolutely. Some, some will do it too late. Duh. You told him. You said, do it on time. Do it now. Now is the time. Now it is high time. I'm getting a deeper revelation about repentance. Huh? It's powerful. Amen? Because everybody ain't going to do it. I, I, the Holy Spirit <laughs> was putting it in my soul. Fear not the one that can just kill the body, but fear the one that can send both the body and the soul into the the into hell. Yes. That's God Almighty. Yes, sir. And you're in a good place. That's it. Beloved, walk in truth. Amen. 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 Don't deceive yourself. Am I right? Amen. If you're doing anything wrong, what do you got to do? Repent. Repent. Turn from it. Amen. Uh, receive your correction, your instructions. Uh, from God, right? Uh, and don't despise him, right? Uh, and, and just do right. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. All right. Thank you, Lord. My God. I want God to help us. 